All right, folks, I want to talk about the filter and modulation section within Trash 2. So I've got a piece of noise here that I've been mangling the past couple minutes. And I'll go ahead and play that and let you hear how, how ridiculous it sounds. And then I'll go ahead and explain what I've done. Okay, so it sounds pretty ridiculous. Not all of that is coming from the filter and modulation section. I've got pretty much all the other modules engaged as well, and they're partaking in the fun. But within just the filter section alone, you have a massive amount of options as far as what you can do. Now, just the filters themselves, I don't have a lot going on at all. You can see, obviously, it's just flat with the exception of... Uh, well, that guy, that's part of the modulation section, which I'll get to in a second. But within the filter section, each filter can be a different type of filter. So I had band 2 disengaged because I wanted to go ahead and show you some of the crazier filter set settings you can have. So there's some really weird ones in here. You see when I go ahead and engage band 2, I'm on uh, vocal 2, which is in the vowel section. So some, some really strange types of filters in here. Let me go ahead and let you hear that. All right, so there's vocal, vocal one. Now if I go up to saturated, we got a saturated band pass. Let you hear how that sounds. Interesting. Okay, now retro. Let's try retro band pass. And it draws a little bit different of a curve. Okay, let's try screaming peak. Now you, you can hear if I pull the cue in and make it really, really high, it just blasts it up past the frequency analyzer. So it's boosting like crazy, and it's really, really, really a uh, small sliver. So it's going to give you those weird kind of overtones, which I've kind of been getting into that lately. Usually they say, you know, you want to boost wide and cut thin, but sometimes if you get some crazy peaky thing going on, it'll really add to the emotion of the song. Provided you're, you're doing some, some weirder stuff. Um, okay, so there's the filters, a couple options. And you can also, you can turn each filter on and off, which is super cool. So you don't have to use all of them. And you also have two of these. So you can have up to 12 bands of filters doing completely separate things. And then when you add the modulation in, go ahead and go there. So you can see here, nothing shows up if I just click modulation. You have to actually click on a band and then it shows you what you've got going so it'll it'll be off at first you just click LFO or envelope so I've went with an LFO here and basically what this is doing is it's boosting and coming back down from this frequency to that frequency and you can also sync the tempo that it does that with whatever your tracks tempo is so I've got that engaged, and let me just go ahead and play it and let you see what it's doing here. You can watch that guy. You also have different kinds of waveforms, which is really cool. That changes the sound even more. So I'm on a triangle right now. I'll go up to just a good old sine wave. Pretty cool stuff. Um, 
the awesome thing about this is you can actually do this to every single band. So you can have 12 different bands with different filter types on each one, and you can have different LFOs and envelopes peaking out and modulating between those frequencies. All of them completely separate, and you can control them independently. So that is a huge deal. Um, you can be incredibly creative working within this and take something like a stupid-sounding guitar like, like I recorded and turn it into something that's, uh, that's interesting. So that is the filter and modulation section. Moving on. <laughs> 